Hey, what's up, YouTube family? This is Pastor Napoleon Mon, founding pastor of New Vision Christian Church right here in the great city of Decatur, Illinois. We want to thank you for tuning in to this video. Listen, the Word of God has something for you. You will be enlightened and you will be encouraged. So on behalf of myself, Lady Tina, and the New Vision family, it's not by accident that you're tuning in. It's by divine providence because God has a message for you. Stay tuned as we come back after this message and we have some more information for you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. I would like to preach as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds. Forget about it. Would you say that with me? Forget about it. Forget about it. One of the things, one of the things that stirred me in this new day and time and in this new era and this new day of theology and rhetoric is that we think that we have, we, we have misconstrued and we have misinterpreted what the devil is really after. Yeah, I, I really believe that we have misinformed, we have been misinformed as to what the enemy is really trying to get at in the life of the believer. In Christendom, we often hear the language in church and around Christians that the enemy is after certain things. When something goes wrong in our lives, watch this, we tend to hear things like the enemy is after our finances, the enemy is after our families. Now watch this, don't get me wrong now, don't get me wrong. He is after certain things. There are demonic forces at work in the atmosphere. But watch this, come on with me, because in Christendom, we often hear language of what the enemy is after. When something goes wrong in our lives, or when something is not right, when something is amiss, when something happens in your life that you don't like, we are quick to talk about what the devil is after. See, the thing that disturbs me is we hear the enemy is not the thing, watch this, that don't make sense because the thing Experience here is dominion. 
Somebody say dominion. He doesn't want you to experience dominion. Catch this please, ladies and gentlemen. After you have received salvation, the next step is dominion. Now, the one thing the devil wants to take from you, if he doesn't get your soul, he wants to take your power. Because, watch it, the devil has enough sense to know, watch me now, after he gets, after you get saved, the Lord wants to give you dominion because in dominion is where you get keys and when you get keys, you learn how to bind and loose some stuff in your life. And if you are one of those that learn how to bind and loose some stuff in your life, the enemy doesn't want you to have dominion because when you have dominion after you receive salvation, now you got power to tell the devil, get up out of my house because you have no dominion in here. Yeah, I, I feel him pushing me already. Just hold my mute just a little while. He doesn't want you to have salvation. He doesn't want you to have dominion. But y'all, the other thing, the devil doesn't want you to worship. Help God. Help God. Oh yeah, he's, he's after, he's after your know, worship. And the only reason the devil messes with stuff in your life is because he is trying to distract you in your relationship with God so he can disrupt your relationship to God. <laughs> Let me come and get you this way. Have you ever noticed sometimes it's hard to get in the posture of worship? Lord, have mercy. Who am I preaching to today? I mean, have you ever noticed that as soon as you try to start worshiping God? Now, I'm not talking about when you just come to church because sometimes, here it is, I just need about 10 bona fide Can I get a witness? Y'all might be quiet on me today. 
See, we have to understand we got to learn to worship God, not for the stuff that he gives us, but for who he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I get a witness in here? Oh, yeah, the enemy, he's after your worship because he knows, watch this, your worship strengthens your relationship with God. Watch this now, because the more you worship, the more you re more is revealed to you. And the more that is revealed, the more you know. And the more you know, the more you understand about God and about who you are in him. The more you know, the more you understand. Here it is, the more you trust God. And the more you trust God, watch this, the more you believe in the power of God. Do I have any folk in here know that the more you believe and trust God, the more you behave like you're supposed to behave in the Lord. Is there anybody in here know that the enemy is trying to take your worship? And I dare you to declare that the devil can't have my worship. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I feel him pushing me. I feel them pushing me a little bit. I, let me work my little message out on this. I, I need some true worshipers because watch this. Catch this. He isn't after religion. Jesus. No, 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 no. The devil can tell less about religion. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's after, he's after worship. Hallelujah. Why? Because there's a big difference between religion, here it is now, and worship. Can, can, can I teach you a little bit? You see, I discovered something, y'all. Religion demands nothing of you. Come in. Back the bus up, because some of y'all just got off. Come in, let me get you. Religion demands nothing of you, but worship demands something from you. Guess this now, watch this. Religion demands nothing but observation. Worship demands participation. Y'all mighty quiet on me today. Yeah. When you are in religion, all you have to do is sit back in front of somebody else and observe what they do. Watch them sing a song. Watch them do their thing and it reminds you that it means something, but when you are in worship, it demands Oh, okay, it's on, it's on. Can I put it right here? In worship, ain't nobody got to tell you to stand up and clap your hands. In worship, no one has to tell you to lift holy hands. In worship, no one has to tell you to clap your hands. In worship, do I have any worshipers in here? In worship, nobody has to tell you to do something. Look at your name and tell them, are you a worshiper? Because if you're a worshiper, you better move something, baby. You better move Yeah, the enemy is a scare of religion because he knows, watch this, religion has boundaries. Yeah, 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 religion has boundaries. He knows religion, watch this, has rules and regulations. He knows religions will keep you distracted with debates about theology and gifts and tongues and prayer languages and denominationalism. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't stop by to tell you, watch this, the devil knows the power that worship possess. Can I, can I just, can I just, can I just, if I, if I pull over right here, I'm gonna keep the motor rolling, because let me just pull over right here and park, just for a few minutes. The enemy knows the power in worship. Yeah. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, I just simply read my Bible. The devil was in charge of praise and worship, and he got fired. You just missed the shot. He was in heaven. He got fired. Is there anybody in here that want to give the devil a flag? Oh, yeah. Tell him, yeah. there's three worshipers in here that's not scared to tell the devil. Watch this. I'm on the clock right now. Excuse me, I don't have time to chit chat, but I came to worship right now. You lost your job. I got your job, and you can't have it back. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Your worship. Yeah. Can I tell you something else before I let you go? See, we have to understand something. We have to understand the reason why we have to understand the power 
in our worship is because, watch this, if we begin to understand and posture ourselves to worship God, here it is. Worship will open up avenues that will not be available for those that don't understand the significance of worship. My God. Okay, listen. We have a whole lot of folk that, let's just talk, give me talk, that say they love God, they know Him, and watch this, but when you observe the atmosphere in which they present themselves in, it doesn't present themselves in an atmosphere of, or a posture of worshiping God because watch this, worship doesn't mean coming to church and coming to Bible study. Worship means, here it is, definition, Webster told me worship means giving homage and reverence to someone or something that is greater than you. So now, if you are a worship Because catch this, we have to understand that's why the devil is after your worship. Yes, yes. So I'm looking at the text, Danny, and I said, what? So now that's where the title comes in. Watch the text. I'm not going to be for you long. Watch the text. That's where the title comes in. Forget about it. Watch the text, ladies and gentlemen, because it's very, it caught me. And I said, oh, now I get it. Look at verse 20, please. We're not going to be before you long. But look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, after the child died, you read the story, we read the scripture. After the child died, David did something. Now, it was bizarre to me, because I had to inquire of the Lord. Because I'm like most of you, I'm reading the text and I'm reading it with a mindset of, now, David fasted and prayed while the child was sick, hoping that God will give the child life and deliver him from ills. But when the child Verse 20 says, David got up, took a shower, put some cologne on, went to church, and worshiped God. This hit me like a ton of bricks. So I'm looking at the text. Can I just pull it right here? Because now we're in pursuit of the text. I believe, watch this, I believe, come on now, I believe that what he was after here in the text. Here it is. I, I got to give you the context. You're going to slave to the text. I have to give you some context. So now, when you go back and look at chapter 11, it says that when kings went out to fight, kings were supposed to go out with the soldiers. But the text says when you go back and read chapter 11, kings go out to war. David stayed home. Now, I don't have time to, to, to plot that road, but watch this. If you want to give the Access to your life be out of position as it relates to your purpose. That's a whole nother sermon. My God. My God. But watch this. This, this. this got me, y'all. Come on, go with me. I'm, I'm going to let you go in about five more hot minutes. The text said, Kings went out, David stayed in. When David stayed in, he went to sleep. When he woke up, he went out on the rooftop. Y'all know the story. When he went out on the rooftop, he turned. Watch this because the enemy has a way of putting What a story. Tell you, this is what a story could do. He turns and he finds and he sees Bathsheba. Now, when he saw, he looked at it and he said, Boy, that's, that, that, that's a dime piece right there. Well, she, she had to be fine because, watch this. He saw her, he looked at it, and he said, I need to know who homegirl is. So, watch this. He said, I, Now, his service went, because he came now, went and found out who she was. That was Bathsheba. 
Because he was the king. Yeah. Out of position, out of purpose. Oh and I told us a whole nother sermon. Yeah. Well, I said, she must have rocked in this world. Because David didn't let that woman go home. Y'all gonna read that story, y'all gonna come back and holler. David got so messed up, he wouldn't let her go home and he kept her, watch this, and he was so messed up, he kept her in the palace and killed her husband. Go back and read the story. Don't you know that sin will make you do some stuff? You said that you would never do? scandal in heaven. Jesus. Don't get quiet on me. Come on, go with me. Yes. Come in and watch this. God sent me. I got to cut across the field before I keep you too long. God sent me, the prophet, and tell David this story. And my says, David gets upset at the story, and I don't want you to miss this. Here it is. David gets upset at the story because David can't understand why. What kind of a man will have a whole lot of sheep here it is now. And steals from a man who only has one big lamb. My God. The reason David gets upset, G, is because when he, when you've been in sin so long, it numbs your spirit to realize it is you. Come here. Sin will take your focus off of who you
So it is my job as the enemy. I need to destroy every lineage that's coming out. Because if they come in out like David, boy, I got some problems on my hands. So all I want you to do is know you need to tell the devil he can forget about taking my worst. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can mess with a whole lot of stuff, but you can't mess with my worship. You can mess with my money, you can mess with my family, you can mess with my job, but you can't mess with my worship. Is there anybody in here? No. Go ahead and shout to the devil. Forget about it. Forget about it. Hallelujah. We coming around the Bible, watch this. So now if David can keep his worship out of all the hell he went through. You've got to help me. How can I keep my worship? If this is what the enemy is after. Because I'm looking at somebody right now, and you in here today, you, you're in church, but you're not in worship. No, no, you're not in worship because there's so much going on in your life that the enemy is trying to distract you right about now. So what made David, or what gave David the capacity and the ability to keep his worship? There's a few things in the text, and I'm going to let you go watch this. Notice the text says, after he went to worship, he went to his house. Yes. One version put it this way. He went to the palace. Woo! Yes. Y'all will make me work. All right, I don't mind. One version said he went to the palace. Watch this. He went to his own house. He went to the palace. Put it together. He went to his house, which is the palace. Okay, let me come get you. The palace is where the king lives. Yeah. Woo! Oh, y'all gonna shout with me when you catch this. Yeah. So now, watch me now. So the palace is where the king lived, and David went home. Yeah. That means no matter what he did, he still the king. Boy, y'all don't know when to shout. Turn for don't know when to shout. It doesn't matter what you do. You're still a child of God. Your issues doesn't identify you as who you are. Text says he went home. All right. That didn't tickle your fancy. You have to understand something here in the text. He went home, so now watch this, because you will have some folk that will try to identify you based on your issues. Who am I talking to today? Folk will try to tag you with your issues. But we're here to tell you today, if you're a child of God, your identity is tied to who your father is. So that's what you have a right to be in the past. How many of y'all are thankful for that today? It doesn't matter what I messed up. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I did wrong. It doesn't matter what people walk out on me. It doesn't matter if I lose my job, if I don't have a job. Here it is. All that matters is this. I can identify with my dad. Coming around now, so let me let you go. Here it is. The reason that you should have shouted right there is because, watch this, you have allowed people to use your insecurities and in identifying you. And now you identify yourself with your insecurities. Lord, help me here. Because see, now, watch this, you can't worship. Because now you're so focused on how people have identified you. So what you need to do is, you need to now posture yourself to begin to focus on who he is and not who you are. Because now if you posture yourself and worship him, you'll forget about you and all that you did and focus on him and all that he's done for you. I'm gone now, we better ride. Come on, Tom, Tom, let's get them. So now here it is. Here is the shout in the text. 
You better watch the text. Somebody's gonna get this. Here it is. David worships, and here it is. After he worships, I love this part, John. He worships, then he goes home. Then the text says, here it is. He goes home to bless Bathsheba. Did y'all hear that? The reason the enemy is after your worship, here it is. Here's the shout. It's because he knows that one of the things you're going to get in worship is an anointing that you have the power, the dominion, to now encourage somebody else. Woo! So he doesn't want you to worship because now in worship, you have been equipped to encourage the person that's sitting next to you. Because he knows that one of the things you are going to get in worship is an anointing of encouragement to go back to your house, go back to your neighborhood, go back to your school, go back to wherever you came from, and you want to have the dominion to bless somebody in your life. Who am I talking to in here? When you go home out the church today, you are taking an anointing with you that will make your house pregnant with possibility. Pregnant with power, promises, and prosperity. You're going home and you're going to pronounce in your house that the blessings of the Lord is in this place. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's go home. Is there anybody here today that came for a blessing today? If you need a blessing from the Lord, if you need a blessing, if you need a financial breakthrough, if you need a breakthrough in your marriage, if you need a breakthrough in your relationship, you need a breakthrough for your children, we stop by to let you know that you need to learn to worship the Lord. God will put an anointing on you that will allow you to go home and bless you with your house. So that's it, God. Go ahead and shout, forget about it. Forget about taking my worship. Because my worship is for real. My worship is not for play. I came to get something from the Lord today, and I'm not leaving here until I get it. Do I have any folk in here that has the mentality of Jacob? I'm going to wrestle with you until I get everything that I came to get. Watch this. I, I can't leave you there. I won't be able to see. I can't leave you there. The text says that David is the one that really needs to die. David sings. Child in sin. Woo. This text is pregnant. David was the one fast. Remember, the text started off by saying, Uriah's widow. David committed adultery with Uriah's wife. Go back and read the text. Nathan, the prophet, told David, because of your sin, Yeah, I'm 
channel the new vision christian church we're gonna have something very exciting for you as you continue to pray with us and i want you to invite you to come out and worship with us as well we are right here at hope academy inside the cafetoria every sunday 12 noon high noon so come on out and be a part of this dynamic worship service and listen our midweek service is at seven o'clock on wednesday nights right here at Hope Academy. So I hope that you come out and be a part of this. I want to personally invite you to come and be a part of this worship service. Personally invite you to be a part of our midweek service. Listen, we love you here at New Vision Christian Church. On behalf of myself, my lovely wife, Lady Tina, and the whole entire New Vision family, we thank you for tuning in. God bless you, my friends, and see you soon.